Hi everyone, welcome to the part 2 of BMC Helix on-prem health check tool video series. In this video, we are going to do the demonstration of the health check tool and in that we will be covering the location from where to download the health check tool, how to install the health check tool, how to execute it and how to read out its output and the reports which are generated from it. There are two places from where you can access the health check tool where it has the downloadable zip file and its documentation related to it. The first one is on the community location and to download from the community you will need to join the BMC Helix operation management community group and, uh, yeah, and that applies to ITOM and ITSM both of them. Once you join in then you will be able to find out the documentation and the download link. The second is the knowledge article. Uh, this is an external knowledge article. You should have a direct access to download the files from it and then access the documentation on that. The link which I opened right now is from the community and the readme file or the steps to install the health check tool. It's mentioned on the community link. The tool will work for BMC Helix on-prem installation for ITOM. It will work for the Helix portal common services for ITSM <coughs> and there is a separate knowledge article kept to validate the ITSM Jenkins input pipeline that we'll see in the next videos. Step number one is to download and extract the zip file into a temporary folder on your control node where the deployment of Helix will be invoked. The zip file will be there in the attachment. So let's download it. The file will get downloaded. In order to save the time, I have already uploaded the file which will be downloaded on the, the control panel node. I'll unzip it. Make sure the unzip is done. Then you get to the directory. Before you execute the health check tool, you need to configure this in one word variables. Let's see what are those. It tells about editing the file, sample environment.settings, and set the values for the Java home install directory and I'll check its city home. The Java home should be the JRE 11 location where you specify till the Java home path. The installation directory is the location where you extracted the EPD image of the deployment manager. And the HCT home is the directory where the Helchick tool is extracted. I will edit the sample environment. In my case, the installation directory is on that location where I put it in. Let's find the Java. In my case, uh, the Java is already installed, but most likely the Java exists on the system. If it's already installed, you will find that under the alternative directory. And what we need is the JRE 11. So if it's not installed, you need to install that one. Otherwise, you will find that uh, in the, the default location for the alternatives. Then we need to specify the Java home. That means it goes one step behind the bean folder, pick up that location and specify that under the Java home. Specify that under the Java home. The default directory for the HCT home is the current working directory which is right because we are running the tool from that location. We'll check the document one more time. Source the sample environment setting.sh. Let's source it. Okay. Now we get to the folder and run the pre-install. The execution starts. Some of the important lines will be shown on the top tool will execute. Most of the messages are kept verbose so that the user understands that uh, the things what is doing in the background will be displayed on the console. For example, it's doing the hardware check. This is the thing. It couldn't find the secret.txt to set up the image registry password. And this is one of the prerequisites which needs to be done before starting the installation. Now let's check about this error what it's saying. It says it's not able to find the password. Check the document for the secrets.txt. 
and it gives the path of the file where it lies. So we need to check in the doc about the significance of the secrets.txt file. If I search in the documentation, then expand that step. If I see here that it asks to put those passwords as a plain text into the secret.txt file before installation is getting started. This is pointed out that the user has missed to edit the file secret.txt and put the password in it. Go back to my installation directory. Directory search. Let's see if there is secret.txt existing. It's not there. I will have to create this one. I have edited my file and put my passwords in it. We'll rerun the health check tool now. Now, since we edited the file and put the right password in it, it should pass through. Now, if you can see the Docker registry has been verified successfully with the Docker login. Now the tool is doing the validation for the NS lookup to all the endpoints and the important servers. It has checked the clocks on each of the nodes and then it checked the certificate. Now it is doing the NFS mount test. It verified the TD execution on the NFS mount points. The tool tries to find out the possible namespace where the ingress is specified. It tries to do, do it automatically. If it doesn't find, then it, it gives a message that you need to set the uh, appropriate variable ingress underscore namespace and then, then it moves. But for in this case, it has detected the thing automatically. And it's doing the host parameter check, which is needed for the elastic search. Okay, now the execution has finished. We see here as one error and one warning. Let's check it. And it completed around 99 checks, 97 were passed. Now if you can see here that it generated two reports. One is in the HTML format and the second one is in the text format. Let's check the second one, which is in text format. And you'll find the error that it tells that the discovery appliance which was configured is already integrated with another RSSO. So it gives some certain K in order to remove the previous integration and then uh, how to test if it's already integrated or not. This is one error. And the second is a warning because it tells about the Kubernetes server version is not matching. It was expecting till 121, but it is a bit higher than 127. And this is one of the criteria for installing the ITSM. And the conclusion of the health check tool was that the system is not ready for the installation because of the error found. And now let's go ahead and check the HTML report. How does it look like? I open this. Now you can see the HTML report, how it shows in the top row, you have the environment details of your host, the type of the configuration being done, then the, the total required RAM and CPU, it has fetched up, and the version of the health check tool, the one which I'm using for testing is 2.4, but the time when you see the video, the release version can be different. But make sure that you will have this health check tool version displayed on the top of the row. The error that we just found out is shown in the HTML. And uh, the comments which comes in is refer the day zero plan and prepare checklist and the system requirement page to correct it. Plus it also gives the knowledge article name of where to look for and resolve the issue. The knowledge article may not be there for all the errors. So make sure you follow the same requirement document and the checklist. The error which shows should be self-explanatory, but at some places uh, the error 
you have to debug more when you see that error in the health check tool which is reported but eventually when you follow the guideline of the requirements and go to that error code in detail uh, you should be able to find out the cause of how to fix it the bunch of the checks which has been successful will be listed into the HTML format uh, let's take example of the SMTP server the connection to the SMTP server was verified so it tells like that and it goes under the info message quick recap um, in this demonstration we saw how to download the health check tool how to install it and then execute and how to read its output and the reports thank you